So basically, we were we were having this collection or a list, right, where we have values, and then we were able to print that with the help of for each. And now we know what is happening behind the scene, right? What if you want to do this with a stream API? Now let me just give you the introduction of stream API here and how it looks like. So if you talk about stream, stream is an interface, right? So if you can see, uh, we have seen that before as well. Stream is basically an interface, right? The thing is, if I go back to nums and if I say dot, you can see now in the list, we got this new method called stream. Again, before 1.8, the method was not there. It was introduced later. But we got this method called stream. Now what this stream does is it gives you or it returns the object of stream, okay? So that means if I want to accept the values, I can say stream of integers. And let, let me just name this as S1. So this is our stream, which is called S1 here. And we got all the values. So whatever values you have in this list is available in this S1. Now with this stream, you can perform any operation and the beauty is it will not going to affect the nums. So whatever changes you make to the stream, if you uh, change the values, if you double the values, it will not going, it is not going to affect nums. Now, why this is important? See, sometimes when you have a data and then if you want to perform some operation, it's not like always you want to uh, change the existing values. Remember when we talked about threads, when you have multiple threads and then uh, you are performing some operation, mutation, it's not good, right? So whatever changes you want to do, do that in this stream and use it. At least you have your original values with you. Okay, now that means I can also print the entire thing with the help of for each. I can say s1 dot for each. Mind you, again in the stream of s1, we got all the values which are there in the list. And let me just try if that works. I will say compile and run. And you can see we got the values here. Now one of the thing about stream is once you use the stream, you can't reuse it. And that's why the name is stream. Example, if you talk about the flow of water, the stream, right? Once, example, if you, let's say if you're sitting near the river or the bank of river, basically if the water passes, you can't retouch the same water. In the same way, once you have worked with a stream, you can't reuse it. Example, let's say if I try to print this multiple times, let's say two times, it will not give an issue with the list, okay? You can simply say nums dot for each multiple times, there's no issue. But if you try to do that with the stream, once again, you can see you will get an error. Compile time, there's no issue, run time, it will work once. The second time it will say, uh, the stream has already been operated upon or closed. That means you can use stream only once. Okay, uh, that makes sense, so we can't reuse it. But then what is the benefit of using stream here? The benefit is stream provides you a lot of methods to work with. Example, if I say s1 dot, uh, we have methods, example, we have methods like filter, Remember when we talked about the earlier example where we were removing all the uh, odd values or we wanted to only get even, even numbers? We can do that in stream as well. Now how it looks like. I can simply say s1 dot. We can use a method called filter. Okay, now what this filter will do is, filter will say, okay, I want to apply the filter here, but give me a condition. So for any particular value, let's say n, what you want to do with this? So I can say, I can use a lambda expression. I can say n mod two equal to equal to zero. So I only want a even number here. So this filter, and if you jump to this filter, you can see filter returns a stream. So what we are doing is, when we say s1 dot filter, it will give you basically a new stream to work with. Well, let's say s2. Again, as I mentioned before, s1 is used, right? So when I say s1 dot filter, your S1 has been used now. Now you got a new stream. Now this S2 basically will have only the even numbers. Let me prove that. Let me print S2 and let's see what values you get here. So I will say compile and run. You can see we only got even numbers. Now see what we are doing here, we'll have a separate video on this, what, how filter works. But the idea is the filter is filtering the value based on the even or odd. You can specify whatever logic you want to. But at this point, I'm just specifying a logic of a condition of even, right? Now, once you got the stream, I can create another stream where I'm doubling the value. I can say stream and I can say integer, let's say S3, because it will give you a new stream. I can do the operation on the new stream, which is S2. On S2, basically I'm trying to double the value, right? So you can do that with map. In this map, for whatever value you get, uh, you can perform some operation on that. At this point, I'm just doubling the value, right? 
As I mentioned, you can use any logic. At this point, I'm just doubling it. And now let's try to see how this stream works. I'm saying S3 now because you can't use S2. S2 is done. And if I compile and run, you can see we got double the values. We got 8, 4 and 12. So yeah, stream provides you this amazing methods on which you can uh, perform the operation on one stream. It will give you a new stream. You can perform the operation on the other stream. It will give you a new stream. Uh, in fact, you can also use some methods which will not give you a stream, but a last output. Example, let's say, if I say S3 dot, there's a method called reduce. Now in this reduce, if you say zero comma, again, I will explain this logic later what I've did, but let's say if I try to do this, if I say C comma E, C plus E, now what this reduce will do it, again, don't focus on the logic now, just focus on my reduce. This reduce will not give me a new stream. This reduce will give me a value of type, whatever type you mentioned with the integer, with the stream, which is integer. So it will give me a int value. So I can say int result equal to s3 dot reduce. And instead of using a for each, now why we can't use for each? Because reduce will give you a single value, which is there in the result. I can simply come back and I can print the result. And I can just compile this code and run. And we can see we got 24. Again, let me repeat, just ignore what is happening inside. We'll talk about this in the next video. What is happening inside this idea is stream makes your work easy by having these functions. We have a function like filter, map, reduce. Now, this, I don't know if you know about this concept of big data. Example, in this world, we are getting so much of data, right? Now, if you want to use all this data, first of all, you have to apply the filter on it. There are some wanted data, there are some unwanted data. So you can apply the filter. Once you, once you apply the filter, the data which you got, you can transform it. Something meaningful. You can do that with the help of map. And then you can make a graph out of it, right? With the help of something called reduce. And then we were able to print the result. Let me just see if that works. Compile, no issue, run, and you got 24. And this is the same logic which you have done here. Can you remember? We have used a for loop which was giving 24. The same thing we have done with the help of stream. Now the beauty is, uh, you can actually write everything in one line. Let me show you something. I will just come in this entire section and here what I can do is I can say nums dot I can say stream it will give me a stream of values on the same stream I can say dot and I can apply a filter and this filter can be uh, it can be any logic as I mentioned we are going for even numbers zero and on the same stream because see nums dot stream nums is the least right it, the stream method will give you the stream on that stream, we are applying a filter. Again, we, we will get a new stream. And on the new stream, we are applying a map, which is uh, n into 2. And then this stream will give you a new stream on which you are applying reduce, where we are saying 0, comma c plus e, or c, comma e, which will be giving me c plus e. And that's it. This reduce will give you one value, right? And that one value you can store in a result. So this nums.stream, let me just give a tab here. Yeah. So this basically nums.stream will give you a stream. On that stream, you're applying a filter. On that stream, it will be applying a map. On that stream, you are applying a reduce. And then you got one value at a time. And this looks much better than the for loop. I know for the newcomers, this will be difficult. But once you get used to it, you will always prefer to use stream. Okay. And uh, one of my favorite uh, trainer or mentor says, Vinkat Subramanyam says, it's not difficult, it's just unfamiliar. Okay, so uh, this is how it works and you can compare with the for loop and this looks much clearer. In fact, it's much more readable, right? On a stream, you are applying a filter, on that filter applied, you are applying a map and then you are reducing. But what is happening behind the scene, that we'll see in the next video.